In almost all geophysical fluid dynamical systems, we see swirling flows. These are called vortices. And we see them in Earth's atmosphere, such as hurricanes, and we see massive vortices on Jupiter, Saturn, almost everywhere we look in geophysical systems, we see these fabulous vortical structures. We're going to do some simple experiments to try to get a first order feel for how they behave. So for our non-rotating experiment, we've put some potassium permanganate here at the bottom. Now we're adding some blue food coloring, some green food coloring, and some orange food coloring. We're going to flip a little plastic flap there on the left side of the tank, right there, right at 9 p.m. There's the flap being flipped. That builds a vortex. We'll now speed up the speed of the movie so we can see it. And you can see it's strongly three-dimensional. There's tons of turbulence inside there, and it's quickly mixing together all the different colors. And that kind of a strongly three-dimensional, highly turbulent vortex is somewhat comparable to what you see in a hurricane. In a rotating experiment, when rotation dominates, the flow becomes very well aligned with the rotation axis, as we saw in the creamer experiments. And then it's very hard for the dye to mix three-dimensionally. So if you put in a couple of patches of dye, as shown here, they'll get drawn by each other horizontally, but they won't mix fully in 3D. So in time, you'll get these amazing filamentary structures that are strongly sheared out, but you won't get full 3D mixing. A lot like what you see in images of vortices on giant planets. Now let's redo that experiment with a rapidly rotating table. We add the purple potassium permanganate. The honeycomb pattern there is evaporative convection. And now we add a couple more colors comparable to the other experiment. And here we go flipping the flap. In the non-rotating experiment, the strongly 3D turbulent vortex quickly mix all the colors together into one patch. Now let's try to understand the basic circulation occurring in Earth's atmosphere. The atmospheric circulation is driven by a difference in heating at the equator versus at the poles. On average, the poles are colder than at the equator. And in most textbooks, you'll see a cross-sectional view of the atmospheric circulation that looks like this slide. There's a polar cell then a feral cell in the middle latitudes, and then an overturning Hadley cell nearest to the equator.
if we look on the surface of the planet in map view, that affiliated with each of these cells is an east-west wind belt. The Hadley cell has the trade winds going from east to west. There are the westerlies in the mid latitudes and the polar easterlies at higher latitudes. I hope that through the basic laboratory analog experiments that we showed today that we've built up some intuition for how fluids exist in non-rotating settings and in rapidly rotating situations such as apply to Earth's atmosphere and ocean. And in doing so, I hope the, the complex fluid dynamics that occur in the atmosphere and ocean have been made a bit more understandable.